uh, welcome back to this course. Uh, we today we are going to start with the lecture number 10. So, in the previous uh, lecture we have started with the scientific computing that how we can find the root of equation. So, we will go further. So, in the previous uh, class we have discussed about the intermediate value theorem and then we have discussed that with the help of graphics where we, we can find out that where the root lies. Now, we will take the help of initial uh, intermediate value theorem and suppose I have equation. So, suppose I take a function f x is equal to cos x minus x e raised to power x. Suppose this function I take and I want to find the root. So, in this case I do not know that where the function will lie either because that in now in this case it involves cos x, x and e raised to power x. So, one way is that that I will plot function cos x, I will plot function e raised to power x and I will see that where this intersect. So, that will be the place where we have the root. Another one is that uh, I want to take the help of initial uh, intermediate value theorem. So, in this case suppose I take f x 0. So, that will be cos 0 minus 0. So, this will be 1. Now, I want to calculate what is f 1. So, f 1 means cos 1 minus e and cos 1 is basically if you see suppose I have a calculator here and I want 1 and then I put cos of 1. So, it gives the value 0.991. So, that is almost equal to 1, but we know that the cos 1 the value of the cos is 1 only when x is equal to 0. So, in this case what is happening? The I have that is the problem that we have taken 1 as a degree, but I just told you that we cannot take 1 as a degree because whenever we will deal with the x that is a real number, we have to convert this into the radians. And now I can uh, find the value of 1 and now cos. So, from here you can see that cos r, r means in the radian the value is coming 0.54. So, it is coming 0 0.540. So, from here I can write 0.540 minus e and value of the e is. So, in this case this value will be less than 0 and this is value greater than 0. So, from here I can say that f 0 into f 1 is negative the less than 0. So, I can from here using intermediate using intermediate value theorem we can say that a real root lie between 0 and 1. So, in this interval the real root lie. So, to find out the roots we start with the first method and that is called the bisection method. So, this is a very famous method the bisection method. So, this method is based on the repeated use of intermediate value theorem. So, suppose we have equation f x equal to 0. So, in this case we will find out the initial i naught. So, let us suppose this is equal to a b. So, in this case my i naught can be 0 1. So, this is my i naught then I will do that with the help of this one. So, I will bisect this one i naught. So, I will get my bisection. So, I call it m 1. So, that is a plus b by 2. So, this is the bisection we got and I will get my another uh, sub interval. So, this sub interval can be a m 1 if f of a into f of m 1 or less than 0. So, it means the root lying here or it can be m 1 b because we know that this is my a, this is my b and this is my m 1 in between. 
So, it can be this also if f of m1 into f of b. So, now this I, I will get my sub interval that is called the m i1. Similarly, I can go for i2. So, i2 will be another m2, i3 it will give you another m3 and so on. So, in this case I will get that this is my i0 I started with this one then I will have i1 that will be uh, i1 will be the subset of i0 then I will get i2 then I will get i3 and this is the sequence of sub intervals I will get as we do the calculation. So, using this one I will get the sequence of sub intervals and after q times processes process we will get our approximate root ok. So, after this one I will get my approximate root in in the sub interval i q. So, the sub interval i q will be basically I start with b 0 minus a 0 and this interval the length will be this one of i q will be b naught minus a naught by 2 q where a naught is my a and b naught is my b. So, that is the starting point we take and then we divide by this one I will get. So, my i 1 I know that is b naught minus a naught by 2. So, this is the first sub interval I will got. Second interval sub I got b 0 minus a 0 and then 2 square. Again I take the sub interval and so on. So, in this way we are decreasing the length of our sub interval. So, if suppose I get the interval i q in which I got the root. So, this is the length of the sub interval b naught minus a naught by 2 q. So, from here I can write down that my bisection method can be written as as my m k plus 1 will be a k plus half b k minus a k with k is from 0, 1, 2 and so on ok. And the interval we got is a k plus 1 b k plus 1. So, that is equal to a k m k plus 1 if f of a k and f of m k plus 1 are negative and that will be equal to m k plus 1 b k if f of m k plus 1 into f of b k is negative. So, this way we can find the bisect the given interval a k plus half b k minus a k and based on this value of the bisect if it is using the intermediate value theorem this can happen and this is my sub interval the new sub interval at the k plus 1th step. So, this is the way we can find the uh, this is the way this bisection method is given for the given interval a and b. Now, suppose how it works. So, let us uh, do the work of this one. So, in generally what we do we make a table. Okay. So, the table means that this is the iterations and that is the k. So, k start for first 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. This is the iteration we have. Then I will get my a k minus 1 a k or b k minus 1. Okay. So, in this case that is the value of so, one I will get that is the value starting with this one. So, that is the value of the b k and then I will get my m k. So, m k will be a k minus 1 
plus b k minus 1 by 2. So, from here I will get the value of this and then I will find the value of f at m k into f at a k minus 1. Only one value I will check and based on this value I will say that what is the where this value is going to come because so let us do the same example. So, I will take f x equal to cos x minus x e raised to the power minus x or e raised to plus x equal to 0 and I know that f 0 in this case was 1 and f 1 I have taken so that is coming 0 or less than uh, negative. So, from here I can say that my a 0 is 0. So, my a 0 in this case is 0 and my b 0 is 1 and the root will lie between 0 and 1. So, I will start with here. So, I will take first 0 and this is my 1. Then with the help of this I will get my m 1 and that is 0 plus 1 by 2 it is 0 0.5. So, based on this I will find the value of 0 0.5 into f 0 and f 0 is 1 that is positive. So, I will try to find the value of 0 0.5 then based on this one I will see that my m 1 will go here or here. Okay. So, maybe we can find the value of this because this is just I am using the calculator. So, I will find out so I am doing everything in the radians. So, this is the value 0 0.5 I have to find. So, this is a 0 0.5 cos. So, that is the value of 0 0.5. So, my so 0 0.877 0 0.877 minus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 multiply by exponential so there will be the exponential term exponential 0.5 so it is i hope it is so this is the value we have calculated so cos 0.5 minus 0.5 into e to the power 0.5 so, it was coming 0 0.877 minus 0 0.5 into this 0.5. So, based on this value, I will try to find that where whether my because suppose this is negative. So, if th this is a negative then this a k will be the same and I will take m 1 here if this is negative. Suppose this is coming negative then I will take m 1 here if it is positive then I will take m 1 here and this become b k. So, these things we can do in just in one go by making a code in the MATLAB. So, uh, let us uh, uh, write the code in the MATLAB. So, based on this first I will do that that how we can stop. So, based on this now we do that how much is the permissible error in this case. Now, we, we know that the b minus a naught is equal to 2 raised to power k or 2 raised to power n. b naught minus a naught 2 raised to power n. Suppose this is the nth iteration and I got my root. So, that suppose this is less than equal to some tolerance. So, this is the tolerance I have given. It can be a tolerance, suppose I have given the tolerance 0 0.5 into 10 to the power minus 4. So, that is 0 0.00005. So, it is giving me the uh, root that is correct up to 4 decimal places. So, in this case I am finding my root that should be a accurate up to 4 decimal places. So, suppose I take this tolerance and suppose uh, this tolerance based on this tolerance my iteration is stopped and I got my root. So, from here I can write down then I take the value of natural log. So, 
तो b नोट माइनस a नोट बाय टू एस पावर n बिकॉज वी नो दैट दिस इज द i n दैन एथ ए सब इंटरवल सो इट शुड बी लेस एंगल टू द लॉग ऑफ टॉलरेंस सो वट इज द वैल्यू आई हैव सो फ्रॉम हेयर आई कैन राइट दिस लॉग b माइनस ए नॉट right minus log tolerance should be less than equal to log of 2 raised power n so based on this one i can write this as log of b not minus a not minus log of tolerance and this one i can write as n into log 2 so i can divide this one by log 2 so that is i can add by this one so that is give you the number of iterations that how many iterations we can have so based on this one so this is the number of iteration n so n is the upper bound so i can say that because my a not is given to me my b not is given i can find my log b not minus a not then i can find the tolerance i know the tolerance itself and i then i can divide by log 2 so my number of tolerance a number of iteration will be always greater than equal to this so based on this one i can say that this key basically that how many number of iteration is needed to find the roots in my i nth value based on this tolerance so based on this one i can say that how many number of iteration is going to take if i am going to use the bisection method to find out the root of equation okay so let's start with the matlab code so we can do the directly go to the matlab yeah so after discussion with the bisection method uh, let's uh, we write the uh, code for mat uh, bisection method so in this case so let's do this one now i will write a script so in this case i will write function and then i want to find out the output so output is suppose i give the output the root that is value of the c and this error i want to give and yc or fc so this is the value of the function i want at the root c so this is equal to i write bisection and then i pass the argument so what is the argument c is required so i want the function whose root i need to find i need to give you the value of a the initial approximation value of b the because i have to give the two interval uh, two values of the interval a and b and then i want to give the tolerance so this is the tolerance i want to give that how much accuracy it is needed so from here i can write i can write the comments there that this program is bisection method then i can give the comments the input so input is function f a a b this is the value of a and b i have to give and the tolerance so tolerance i need to give then i can write here the output so output will be the root that is equal to c value of the root f c and error so that is equal to err so these comments we can write based on our understanding that later on if we want to open this uh, function then i should be able to know 
that what is the meaning of input here and what is the output of this function. And now suppose I want to save this function. So, let us save this one. So, the name of the function and the file should be same. So, it automatically giving you the bisection dot m. So, I will save this one. So, now it is saved as a bisection dot m and that is the name of the function that is bisection dot m. So, now what I do is that, so from here I am getting the value of the function f. So, I will write f a. So, f a gives the value. So, I will use the inbuilt function f evaluate the function f at a. So, this is the inbuilt function I have used. Then I write f b. So, that is also equal to f evaluate the value of the function f at p. So, this is the I have calculated. Now, I give the if loop that if f a multiplied by f b. So, if they are the of the same sign. So, it means if I write that f a is greater than f b into f a into f b is greater than 0, it means that they are the same sign. So, in this case I will write I will write the display. So, it will show me that no root lies in the given interval. So, that interval I can write as a a p and same colon and this one. And then I will come out from the if loop that I will put the end. So, this is here I, so it will not go to the next step, it will return the to the output value. So, that is why I write give the return. Now, so from, uh, from the uh, bisection method we know that how much iterations are there if I have the value of a and b. So, from here I will write the maximum it because how many iteration is needed. So, I will define a variable max iterate maximum iteration. So, what I do I do the 1 plus round off. So, I will do the round off and then I will write this log. So, log means is a natural logarithm b minus a minus log tolerance. So, this is what is needed. So, that is there. Now, I will divide this by log 2 and this one I will find out. So, that gives you the maximum number of iteration. Why I am putting the round off here? Because this value can be a real number. So, I will round it and then I am putting plus 1. So, that will be the maximum iteration I needed. Then from here I can write that f print f. So, this will give the print on the on the file, but in this case I am not opening the file. So, it will print on the command windows itself. So, in this case I will want to print total number of iterations in bisection is. So, this one I will put it here and then I will write m percent d. So, m percent d is decimal, it will show you the value in the decimal integers and then I will close down the semicolon and then comma and then I put max itr. So, it will display the number of iterations is going to be used in this program. So, that is the maximum iteration it will show you. So, after that I will write so, I will start with my iteration. So, I put itr is equal to 1. This is the first iteration I want. Then I will write i f print f. So, now I want to show the results at each iteration. So, it will give you that the new line I want. So, at itr at is equal to percent d. 
So, it will show you that add the iteration number, whatever the number it come from here, it will give you the value here. Then it give you value of A, so that is M percent or percentage sorry, not M percent, it is percentage 7.6 F. So, it gives you the value that I am considering my F to be printed here at this value in the floating point form with the 7 digit and 6 digit after the decimal. Okay. So, this one I want then comma and then I want to print my value of B the same way I, I am doing the percentage 7.6 F and then I want my new line so that it should be printed a new line and then I will close down this one. So, the first value is ITR then value of A then B and this will I will close down. So, that is my F print F print F value. Now, I will start doing the calculation. So, I will do the for loop. So, for loop I will start from 1 to uh, maximum ITR. So, this one I will write. Then what I will do? I will find the value of C. So, C will give me the value of A plus B and then by 2. So, this is the new value using the bisection method. I found the new value that is C is equal to A plus B by 2. Now, what I do is that I want to find the value of F C. So, this is the value I want to find evaluate this value of F at C. So, this is the value to give you. Now, if F C is equal to 0, suppose at this point the value comes F 0, then what will happen? It means we reach the root. So, A will become C and B also becomes C and then it will in this case nothing I need to do. So, if it is not happening here, then I will write else if. So, if this is true it will come, if it is not true it will go to the else if. Now, the else if I want that f b multiplied by f c and I will see this sign. So, if the sign is greater than 0, so this is the sign if greater than 0, then what will happen? It means that b will is equal to c and f b is equal to f c else a will be c and f a will be f c. So, this will happen and then I will put the end. So, this is the end of the if loop. Then I will put I change my iteration. So, iteration will become ITR plus 1 because I have to increment the iteration and from here I will write the same thing I want to write. So, I will copy this one command and then if B minus A is less than tolerance. So, I suppose it is less than tolerance, then I should break and then I should come out from the program and then I will write and. So, this is the value. So, that is the at iteration 1, I can write here initially, initially, initial b. So, at iteration 1, I am giving the value at initial a and initial b, whatever the value we are giving, it will display here and then after that my iteration will start and this will keep continuing like that. So, after doing this one, so it reached a maximum iteration, then I will after this I will write c is equal to a plus b by 2. So, that is my c and I want to find the error. So, error will be I will find out the absolute value of b minus a and then my f c 
So, that f c will be f evaluate the value of f at c and this will return from here. So, my f c is there, c is there and error is there. So, that is the program I think we have done. Now, what I want to do? I want to call this program from some script file. So, now I will also start a new file. So, this is the new file. So, in in the new file we always want that if the previous any previous file is, is opened that should be closed. So, what I will do is I will start always with clear all and CLC. So, this will I have to write. Now, what I want to do is that suppose I want to find out now I need a function f to start with. So, I will write the function f is equal to uh, I will uh, write the anonymous function. So, at the rate x and then I apply cos x minus x star exponential x. So, this is the function I just defined and now based on this one, now I want to give the value of a and b that which value of a and b should be given so that I will get my solution. So, in this case in the uh, previous exam uh, this example suppose I give start with value of a is equal to 0. I do not know that where the value is this and I will give the value b is equal to 1. So, let us start with this one and then I now I call this one. So, I want root error and y root or f root the value of f at root. So, this is the output I am going to get. Now, I will call my function by section and then I will pass the value of f, then a, then b and then tolerance. So, this tolerance I have to define here. Now, what I do is that I will define my tolerance. So, tolerance I am defining uh, maybe 0.5 into 10 raised to power suppose I take minus 4. So, this is the tolerance I am defining that I should get my solution correct up to 4 decimal. Okay. So, I will save this function as main function or calling function. So, I will write it as main function and I will save it. Now, suppose I want to run this one. So, let us run this one. So, it will give you that some error has happened. So, this is in the call function I have called. So, here it is written that undefined variable in the line 5 in the bisection. So, by mistake I have written this one. So, at the line 5 here. So, you can see that by mistake I have written like this one. So, f e value. Now, it is ok I think. Yeah. So, it is ok now. Now, let us run the code again. So, this is the code and I run it. Now, if I want to check the solution. So, that gives me the uh, command. So, this is the solution we got. I have started with the total number of iteration is 15. At iteration 1 initial value I have started with a is equal to 0 and b is equal to 1. Then what is happening at iteration 2 this will it will be a 1 plus 0 1 by 2. So, it will a will be 0 0.5 b will be this one at iteration 3 it will be this one. So, after doing all this iteration ultimately in the end. So, we have a 16 iteration, but maximum iteration 15 because the first iteration I have just taken a starting from the 1 because otherwise it is a my initial iteration. So, I should start with the 0 also. So, in this case if I write this one. So, in the end the final end I will get my solution that is 0 0.5177. So, that is my solution after doing this 15 iteration. So, maybe I can change the number of iterations here. So, this is my code and I can start with 0. 
Okay. So, 0 means at iteration 0 means the initial value I am giving this value and after this it is calculating the value of this function. So, this is f I am doing this one and now I can call from here. So, now I can maybe I can change my accuracy. So, I will give the value tolerance value is equal to maybe 3 because once I change the tolerance the number of iteration will also change. And suppose I run the code. So, if I run the code I will get new value of this one. So, in this case the number of iteration maximum number of iteration is 12 and this starting from the 0. So, this is my initial approximation and after some time you will get you see that that is my solution. So, at iteration 11 you will get a is equal to 0 0.175 and b is equal to 0 0.18066. So, in this case the it is not reaching to the up to the tolerance, but we have started our code with the number of iterations and the number of iterations I am taking always maximum iteration. So, it will not run more than the maximum number of iteration. So, in, the, in this code the maximum number of iteration I have defined and then maximum iterations is not giving me the solution up to this tolerance or maybe if I want to increase the, I will take the 5 number of number of iteration will increase and then so that is my solution now. So, in this case the number of iteration become 19 and that is my initial conditions initial uh, approximations and with the time after iteration 18 my solution is this one. So, that is the solution we are getting. So, 5.1 so, up to 4 digit or 5 digit is giving the accuracy. Okay. So, that is I am going to get now I will somebody says that okay, I want to change the initial approximation. So, instead of a I want to start with maybe minus 1 and then b is equal to 1. So, let us see what will happen. So, in this case uh, if you just see the iteration becomes 20 and it is starting from minus 1 and the b is 1. So, in this case after some time and in the end after the 20 iteration at iteration 19 you will get this value. So, that is the value we are getting. Because in the code we have written that so this is the code. So, I have given you that for if i is equal to iteration maximum iteration it reaches then do, but in between I have also written that if b minus a is less than tolerance then you just stop. So, in this case you see that the number of maximum iteration is 20, but after the 19th iteration we got the solution because here the value of b minus a is less than tolerance. So, it will break from the loop and it will come out. So, that is why this code we have written like that. So, based on this one I can find the value of. So, this is and this is my workspace a b f. So, in this case I can find because somebody wants to see that okay, I do not know the value of f where this value is coming. So, I have defined my f and now suppose I want to find out that what is the value. So, maybe you can check f you can try with values of f maybe at minus 2. So, that gives the value minus this then I can try here. So, it gives the plus value it gives the minus value then the plus value. one, two. So, the one root is lying here between f 2 and f 1. So, this one I can check also by the code f 0. So, f 0 gives the f at 0. So, that is the root we can find from the inbuilt function and that is the root of this one. So, based on this one I can just to verify that whether my solution is giving uh, code is giving the solution. So, I can find from there that this is my root or maybe I can define the root 
near minus 1. So, near minus 1 I can find the another root and this is my root. So, in this case based on this one the real value of this I can find the roots uh, based on that where this point is lying. So, because from here you can see that f minus 2 is giving this value and f minus 1 is giving this value. So, one root also lying in between. So, let us uh, in the code. So, let us write this one. So, that is the mean. So, in this case I will define maybe minus 2 and minus 1 and let us run this code. So, that is the value after the 19. So, total number of iterations are 19 and after the 18 iterations you can see that my root is coming and that is a is equal to minus 1.8639. So, this is another real root we can define we can find with the help of this code. So, that is the initial code on the bisection method. So, maybe uh, today we have started with the, the basic uh, uh, we have used our basic knowledge of MATLAB to, uh, to write the first code that is a bisection method and using this bisection method we can find the root for the various equation based on this one. So, in the next uh, lectures we will start with we continue with this one. So, thanks for viewing thanks very much. Thank you.